Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be looking at Gold Mythic Stars who is going to be coming to the game as an ultra token world character. We did get stripes, now we've got stars so I guess it's stars and stripes. These are the 4th of July characters pretty much and visually you can see on the right hand side stars looks pretty good. He's got double handed weapons kind of reminiscent of I think it was Jesus back in the day and there are other parts in this kit that are very reminiscent of that very same Jesus as well. If we can see the kind of animation there, that's kind of cool. But um, yeah, kind of donned in the same sort of gear that Stripes is, bomber helmet on, so on and so forth. Got a lot of grenades, looking very um, very patriotic with those grenades, the coloring and on them and everything. If we look on the left hand side, we can see him. There's also a bird in the background. No eagle on his actual visuals, unfortunately. That would be kind of cool if he just sent in an eagle on the attacks, but that's not going to be the case. But visually, obviously, he looks really, really cool. If we look at the stats, at level 1440, limit break 3, he has got 16,279 attack. 31,653 defense and a massive 42,505 HP. Obviously a fast character or holding those blades. Going to be a tank, Gold Mythic of course, and another character to join the Holiday Heroes Allegiance. I don't know how many we've got right now, but it is absolutely insane. Now first off we're going to look at the Adrenaline Rush and it is called Bloody Anthem. It's a 75 AP cost rush so quite slow but because of the special skill I think this is what most people maybe would actually prefer. Heal all teammates for 50% of their max HP while battling on the defense team deal 20% of this fighter's max HP as damage to an enemy. All other enemies get 10% of this fighter's max HP as bleed damage for two turns. So obviously three things going on here but only, i think only one of them works if you're using them on an attack team not much of an attack team character to be honest but on a defense team he's going to get some bonuses the heal all teammates of 50 percent of their max hp is nice it's just going to be a nice little boost he is a tank so he's not going to get any extra boost from passes with that while batting on the defense team deal 20 percent of this fighter's max hp as damage to an enemy and his HP is his highest stat. Obviously, if you get him behind a HP leader, you give him a HP on the weapon, that HP is going to get very, very, very high. It's going to be over 100k, so it could be dealing 20,000 damage plus to an enemy. Defense does not count here. Only bonus HP can block the damage. All other enemies get 10% of this fighter's max HP as bleed damage for two turns. This is potentially like going to be 10k plus. Again, pretty nice. It's the same sort of damage that's going to come out from the actual flat damage that's going to be done it's just going to be done over two turns and bleed so yeah not too bad at all the damage output we've got a lot of heavy damage dealers honestly when it comes to defense characters and this is not going to be any different when it comes to stars okay so here we have stars on a defense team i have put him in the leader slot so obviously he's not getting any leader bonuses in terms of extra hp i think the hp is 60k so his damage should be around about 12 and the bleed should be around about six we're just going to defend and you're going to see the damage come out it's going to be a flat 12k and you did see my character did have 50 percent defense bonus obviously doesn't mean anything because i defended on the characters then everyone's got this half the amount of damage that was done to um to hang in in bleed and that obviously cause a reasonable amount of damage over you know the extra turns if i get to my next turns I'll take 6.3k damage per turn because it's 10% of his max HP. The higher his HP is, the more damage this does behind the leader. You get an extra you know, 25, 30, 40, up to potentially higher HP numbers in the future. And that is why I don't think getting 100k HP is going to be too out of the question for stars. Like I said, 60k plus with just him and the weapon. So yeah, his base HP is just so, so high. This is obviously the improved stats that we've been getting on more recent characters. And being a defensive character, it's going to be more imbalanced towards defense and HP, and, but the HP is, is crazy. If we look at the upgrades here, you can see at grade 3, he gets plus 25% to the heal. So initially, it is just going to be a 25% heal to all teammates, but it goes up to 50%. At grade 5, he gets an upgrade where all other enemies get 10% of this fighter's max HP as bleed damage for two turns. So initially, it is just going to be 
a direct damage hit, but it's only grade 5 required to improve that. Then we get it to LB2, and that 10% of this fighter's max HP as damage goes up to 20% of this fighter's max HP as damage. So the rush is okay. He's not going to be using this too often because it's 75 AP, the way the rest of his kit works. If he manages to get this rush off, as a defense team, you could probably say you're happy because you've done the job. It probably isn't going to be hitting five characters in that case because, generally speaking, this is going to happen potentially as late as something like turn five or six just because of the AP turnaround on the signature moves. Unless he takes damage and gets extra AP that way, he's generally not going to be gaining AP other than doing his signature move. But if it happens, it's nice. Heals the, his entire team does a bit of damage to the enemy team the signature move is a little bit more important because obviously this is going to happen a little bit more often it's called america's gifts it has got an initial cooldown of turn two rather than turn one but again we'll talk about that in just a second cooldown of three turns number of uses unlimited this fighter recovers from heal reduction and heals 30 percent of their max hp for each living enemy for three turns Deal 6,000 hemorrhage damage to an enemy when battling on the defense team impair two enemies for two turns. So this signature move is obviously really powerful. And the reason it starts off at turn two is because of the special skill. You probably would want that to go off on turn one, force people to actually attack this character, enable other characters to have a little bit extra survivability because of that being a human shield is obviously going to be nicer. Um, so turn two isn't terrible, but when it does go off, he obviously removes the hill reduction which is reasonably prevalent at the moment it's not massive but it's it's reasonable it just makes sure that his heals that come in afterwards will heal him instantly and then obviously for the next three turns so it's going to be 90 percent of his max hp in those three turns Six thousand hemorrhage damage is pretty heavy this should double effectively every turn so it'll go from 6 to 12 and then 12 to 18 because it'll add 6k hemorrhage every turn so after like two or three turns Attack team characters can be in a lot of trouble. It bypasses bonus HP, defense rating, so on and so forth. So that's not too bad. The impair two for two is very powerful. It's just any character. He does have to be on a defense team. But again, like I said, he's primarily a defense team character by the looks of things. Um, he, he obviously has on the defense team on his rush and on his signature move here. So yeah, probably going to be more of a defense team character. That's for sure. Okay, so here we are off of turn one, and as you can see, we've got stars on a defense team again. This time he has got some teammates around him. I've used, obviously, lower level teammates just so it's a bit easier to see what's going on. He has got some heal reduction on him as well, which I've managed to apply. But on the first turn, he will obviously not do his signature move because it's initial cooldown of turn two. So he'll do it on turn two, but on turn one, he'll do his specialist skill. So if I defend, you'll see the specialist skill come into action and he has done human shield on his teammates this is obviously very beneficial i can't select the other characters i'd only be able to clip them if one of my characters had focus and only those characters with focus could actually bypass a human shield and there are characters around that give you punishments for getting focus or even just stop you um like actually remove it from your team so some synergy matchups with uh stars there could be actually pretty good i'm gonna try and apply the um heal reduction again i don't think i need to i think it's going to last for another turn um so it'll go to his turn he'll cleanse the heal reduction and then he'll give himself i believe 30 percent heal for each living enemy so right now i've got five and like characters on my team and those are enemies to stars so it should be 150 percent heal he removed the heal reduction as you can see the cleanse animation came in and he killed himself for 150 percent for three turns one of those turns is the turns he actually does it. The next turn is this turn. So if we just defend on everyone again, this is the next turn. And he obviously will human shield again. And then he should heal human shield for like three turns in a row. Then he'll do his signature move again. And then he might have enough AP at that point to do his rush. You can see his rush is slow to get, um, basically. And you can see the hemorrhage on titan was initially 6k it's now up to 12 so we're just going to keep defending and it should go to 18 at this point there we go so it just adds 6k each time when he does his signature move again he'll just target another character effectively because titan will be dead in this case we'll keep defending just to show you 
Then we do it again. Now there's only four characters alive who only do 120% heal rather than 150%. And a new character has got the hemorrhage, which is going to be Agent 46. And you obviously saw those impairs going out as well. He was impairing two for two turns when he was doing that signature move. Problematic. No AP gain when you're impaired. You can't use your rushes when you're impaired. You obviously have to cleanse it first before you can start gaining AP. There aren't too many people who can cleanse other characters. There are some people who can self-cleanse, so it's very specific to certain characters. But yeah, it's generally a problem. You can see the upgrades here. Grade 2 is going to get an upgrade where you deal 6,000 hemorrhage damage to an enemy. Like I said, this could work in a lot of different game modes. This potentially could even work on attack. If you had like an auto cheese team, you could potentially use it on a character that doesn't have like damage over time reduction. And it will obviously uh, do 6,000 hemorrhage, 12, 18, as we saw on that Titan in the previous clip. Plus one impair target at grade four. So initially it is just going to be one for two turns, but then it goes for two for two turns. At limit break one, it gets minus one to starting cooldown. So it goes from a three turn starting cooldown down to a two turn starting cooldown. And then at LB3, it gets an upgrade where this fighter recovers from hill reductions. If the hill reduction cleanse obviously comes in because you've got him to LB3, yeah, he's he's in a lot. He's in very good shape. He's in very good shape. I think it's just going to be the potential of over 100% just in case someone reapplies hill reduction later on. And then obviously there are characters out there that can potentially cleanse that as the fight goes on anyway. Uh, you don't really want to focus on shields. You want you want to kind of distract them. You don't want them to be a problem. But a lot, honestly, a lot going on on this signature move. Part of it is only on defense, though, the, the two for two on the impair. But that is probably one of the most problematic parts of this when you're going to face stars on a defense team. Impairing attack team characters is very problematic. Attack team rushes are generally the more important things. So uh, impair is pro very problematic for attack teams. This is where the power is. It is definitely the cinch move. The rush is nice, but he's not going to be doing that too quickly, as you saw in that clip when I did all the defends. It could potentially even be like turn seven or so. But the cinch move goes off very early and will give you a nice little start in the fight as a defense team. So obviously, Stars is an ultra token world character. So we are going to be doing an ultra token giveaway. 10,000 ultra tokens to the winner of the giveaway. And all you have to do is is right in part of a sentence the word eagle pretty simple there is an eagle in the background on stars his art here is a bit you know iconic for the 4th of um, july kind of independence day celebrations in america you have to type it as part of your your entry phrase remember put it in the comments not the live stream chat make it part of a sentence so youtube does not block your comment you just write eagle or you do lots of spamming on your comments it can potentially block your account and i may not unblock your comment in time for you to have your entry count best of luck if you enter guys now back to the video now of course stars has got some mythic abilities these are his passive skills he is going to be a tank so he's going to get strength where he has 40 percent critical hit resistance this is going to obviously stop certain specialists from working properly certain you know characters from getting things off certain weapons potentially that apply stuff when critting this is generally quite nice. It was very problematic when you had the entire defense team have it with Rick. And it's quite nice when you've got someone who has it as well. Considering you might be forced to attack this guy, even more problematic. The next one is called Pacification. When being attacked, 100% chance the attacker gets disarmed for two turns. So this is 100% chance that the attacker gets disarmed. You can't remove this, obviously, because it's a, a mythic ability. So disarm is going to be everywhere. This is going to remove the third slot on weapons as long as that third slot can actually have an application when attacking. And that can be like 45% attack when the enemy's HP is over a percentage. Or it could be like um, double attack. It could be stun on attack. These sort of things. It's going to disarm it every single time. Even when Stars himself is like stunned or controlled, like you can potentially pacify or even like disarmed, it's not going to stop his mythic abilities here the next one is called defensive stance when performing the defend action 100 percent chance all medic teammates get camouflage for two turns and all tank teammates get guardian shield this is why you saw when he was doing his um shield before he was just getting a guardian shield himself and that is because he is a tank and this will apply to him but if you have two other tanks on the defense team too 
it will also apply to them. I can't remember exactly who are tanks on like the fast defense teams with um, with Davy. I think Davy himself may even be a tank, so he could potentially get a Guardian Shield here. There is at least one or two other tanks on those teams, so yeah, that's going to be Guardian Shields, and there's obviously going to be Medics on those teams as well, and that's going to be Camouflage. That stops AoE damage, it stops line damage if those characters are in the line. If you select the wrong character, or if they've both got Camouflage, it could be potentially beneficial to like line up your medics in that case um, the next one and last passive is called fireworks when this fighter receives a debilitating effect 80 percent chance a random enemy gets stunned for one turn and generally speaking you would try and get this character out of the fight by using a debilitating status effect and he's effectively going to punish you for trying to do that that is obviously going to be very problematic for your chances to uh to just at least ignore him which is what a lot of people try to do with human shields is just ignore them leave them till last they'll no longer human shield and you can try and destroy them it's going to be a lot harder here with stars to do that okay so we're going to attack again and stars here is on the defense team we're going to just do a basic attack first with rosita just to show you that if she does an attack she is guaranteed to get disarmed she doesn't have to crit she doesn't even have to hit him so if he has an absolute defense weapon as long as he actually you know is attacked it isn't about taking damage she will get disarmed for two turns this is problematic for certain characters obviously i'm going to lay down some debilitating status effects now and see if some stuns come off you can see diamond got stunned for one turn williams signature is going to come out here i don't see a stun coming i'm just gonna move to the next turn i actually don't think okay we can do it with diamond now uh now trader gets stunned for one turn and that's how it is basically at the end of the fight, if you do leave him until last and you just try and hit the auto button, you can run into problems when you're just doing controls because it can just slow down your attacks and so on and so forth. But like I said, you don't really want to focus too much on a human shield like I have here. The other characters on that defense team are going to be just running right in the meantime. So if we go straight into the upgrades, you can see at grade one, it gets the first half of pacification, whereas the 50% chance the attacker gets disarmed for two turns. At grade 2, it gets the first half of strength where there's 20% critical hit resistance. At grade 3, there'll be the second half of pacification. And it'll be 100% chance the attacker gets disarmed for two turns. This is on any attack. Like I said, it isn't about causing him damage. It's just about when he is attacked. Um, at grade 4, he's going to get the first half of defensive stance. When performing the defend action, 50% chance all medic teammates get camouflage for two turns and all tank teammates get guardian shield pretty straightforward and then at grade five when this fighter receives a debilitating effect 40 percent chance a random enemy gets stunned for one turn as we move on to the limit breaks it's going to be 40 percent critical hit resistance at limit break one limit break two is going to make defensive stance two come in making a hundred percent chance medics get camouflage and tanks get a guardian shield and then at limit break three fireworks two comes in making it 80 percent total chance then an enemy gets stunned for one turn whenever stars has a debilitating status effect land on him i think these passive are quite nice i think defensive stance is going to be the one that's going to be really nice obviously you could load up the team with all tanks that means every single turn he does his human shield everybody would get a guardian shield drastically show, slow down the fight same thing you could load it up with medics not necessarily as good an idea just because there are characters that get bonuses against medics but then there are characters that counter those characters like princess and so on and so forth so you know princess countering sophia could mean medics are more useful on those teams there could be some nice matchups some nice team ups um, i do see primarily stars as kind of like a boost for these davy defense teams though by the looks of things now fireworks with the debilitating status effect it is worth noting it does only last for one turn it is the turn you are taking so if your entire attack team has taken their turn already and the last thing you do is try to debilitate stars and it lands, that stun that comes in will just be refreshed at the beginning of your next attack. This is not going to be as problematic for an attack team, but it does mean you're going to have to risk it with the resists against stars or you're going to have to just time your attacks and it can just be slow down your attack in terms of the planning phase when you're just kind of like trying to work out what you're going to do and what order. A lot of the time i like to get my controls off earlier and then do my damage whereas this way you have to do your damage first then do your controls afterwards so if those controls don't land which can obviously happen with the amount of mods we've got around right now and resist and so on and so forth that character is just free to do whatever they want the next turn 
So I'm just going to quickly touch on the special skill and it is human shield. I think a lot of people know how this works. It is a lot like the Jesus that had the two blades in his hands once upon a time as a human shield fast. So it's kind of like reminiscent of that. While this fighter is defending, all attacks from human enemies may only target them. And then you obviously you have to swipe right to defend and actually get that action to happen. On the defense team, it happens automatically unless the character can do a signature move or a rush. This is why the signature move is turn two, so it automatically happens turn one. It's guaranteed to happen every single time unless this character gets normalized, and then obviously it can't happen. However, I will say he has got one more thing left in his kit, and it's going to stop those normalizers being as much of a problem. And that would be the attached weapon. It is Stars Dual Survival Knives. They have got 40% HP and 40% defense base. Burn resistance at the start of each wave. All teammates get 100% burn resistance for four turns. And then in the four slot, normalize resistance at the start of each wave. This fighter gets 100% normalize resistance for two turns. This is obviously really nice. It makes him actually a bit more of a support character here where he's going to be giving some boost to his teammates. The burn resistance is obviously quite important for certain defense teams. Burn is massive at the moment in terms of Raulito and the kind of burn numbers you can get up really quickly. Akira's come out, of course. This does make it a little bit harder, obviously, to attack with these burn characters. But um, you can remove this, but it is on every single enemy. It does last for four turns as well. I think this is one of the longest lasting like resists that we have in the game. Other than like DOT, like the damage over time reduction that just lasts for the rest of combat. But um, yeah, burn resistance is, is very problematic for people if you want burn. And that's pretty much as simple as that. The normalized resistance is going to stop the actual human shield capabilities off of turn one being a problem again you can potentially try and set this up but you're going to be getting disarmed consistently when you do these things now you don't have to use this weapon you could say to yourself that you prefer absolute defense if you want to use him in a team with let's say wang far lead wang far brings burn resistance to the table already and then you could go with absolute defense in the third slot not necessarily a good way to go on his base weapon you could potentially just put a weapon that you've already got pre-made into his hands. It's completely up to you. Starts off with five star. It's just going to be three upgrades on HP and defense in general. You have to choose where to go. I would say on human shields, HP is generally a good pick, especially with stars because his base HP is the highest stat. So that was just a little look at gold mythic stars, who, like I said, is going to be coming to the game as an ultra token will character. And he is effectively the, the premier promo character for the 4th of July. We have got stars and we have also got stripes. If you haven't checked out stripes, go check out her video. It should be in the top right hand corner right now. But otherwise, to tell me what you think about stars here as a character. What are your thoughts on the kind of teams that you're going to put him in? Best of luck if you enter the giveaway in this video. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.